The trumpets have sounded and the end is nigh. But have no fear, your prophet is here. I'm the Fresh King Benjamin, host of Vibing the Apocalypse, a podcast that uses comedy to bring injustices that I went through to light. I'm an escapee from a Mormon polygamous compound in Wyoming. I was taught that the world was a wicked, wicked place. But now that I've escaped, I want you to show me all the wicked things and help me catch up on what I missed out on. Check out Vibing the Apocalypse right here on Ride the Wave Media. The following program is powered by Ride the Wave Media. Introducing the best podcast in Utah, Radio Daybreak. Here are your hosts, Just Plain and Bex. Ah, uh, yes, here we are. Bex is another show for us, and I am so excited about this one. I know you, you're you a little bit geeking out on this one, Blaine. I already you are am. so excited about this next guest. You know what? I'm excited about this week because right here on Ride the Wave Media, guess what happens? Game related, okay. my video game podcast is dropping this week. Oh, this is perfect. So our guest today really ties into that. But before we get to that, yeah. Daybreak Business Community, they we've been doing some stuff. What's what's going on? We got some new uh some new announcements, right? Oh, Blaine, I have got so many announcements. Like where do I even begin? How about this? All right. Super exciting news. We are having our first ever workshop. Ooh. Um, if you've been to our meetings, you know that everybody is just all about, it's the beginning of the year, marketing, branding, logos. They need help. Like, oh, yeah. Small businesses need help getting their branding out there to grow. And I'm excited to announce that our very first workshop is going to be Thursday, February 22nd from 7 mm. to 8.30 p.m. Okay. This is going to be at Novel. And uh, we're going to have the amazing Sawyer Norman and Kaylee Wright from Agency. Who ah, will be discussing yes. Inside, outside, upside down, everything you need to know about marketing for your small business. I love that. That's going to be an wow. excellent workshop. Go to RadioDaybreak.com if you want to see some of their work. They did our site. They did RadioDaybreak.com. And you mentioned those meetings. If people don't know about those meetings... Guess what? They're on Wednesdays starting February 7th Yep. at Ma's Pizza right here. It's next to the Harmons. It's behind the Harmons. If you don't know where it is, it's brand new. Yep. Just opened up. I can't wait to get over there. But yeah, we'll be doing the Daybreak Business Networking meetings right there at Ma's starting February 7th. I can't wait for that. Now let's head over to Galaxy of Games. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. I'm going to go nerd out with Drew Kimball at Galaxy of Games. And it's going to be so much fun. Make sure you stick around, though, because we got some exciting news for you Daybreak Farmer's Market people. I'm not saying that jokingly because there's a lot of people who are ecstatic about this next this upcoming season sure, sure. for the Farmer's and Market. And if you've been to one of our Farmer's Markets, you know they are amazing. So we've got a little insider scoop at the end of our show. Be sure to tune in listen to that. That's right. Stick around. But let's go to Galaxy of Games. Bex, I'm in heaven. You're like, in I'm in heaven. You're in your element today. We are sitting here <laughs> with Drew at Galaxy of Games. Yes, games, 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 yes. like video games, board games. There's all kinds of games around here. Surrounded by it all. We got Atari, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, you you name it, Sega. The only, thing, you got the only thing I've seen here that could run me out of here is that Jar Jar Binks statue up there. <laughs> Go on, other than that. You're getting called out here already, Drew. <laughs> That's the Jeff's mascot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Drew. You've got something crazy here, man. What what are we sitting in? Yeah, we sell fun, and it's it, Galaxy of Games is has something for everyone. So I, I like to think of it as how do you spend your time having fun in the side of the house? Who do you yeah. who do you game with? Yeah, everyone has a story, a nostalgic story of at Grandma's house. We play Uno, we play Risk, we play Catan. Oh yeah, so we sell all that stuff. I grew up in the in the era of the side scroller video games. Oh yes, eighty five, eighty five. Nintendo, Nintendo came yes. out yes. and. My friend up the street had one, and I played it all the time. <laughs> That's kind of how it was. Awesome. Man, if you think about the price of a Nintendo yeah. back then, yeah, in today's money, that's seven hundred, eight hundred bucks. I know I couldn't afford it back then. No, my it, parents well, couldn't afford it. I no. can barely afford that now. <laughs> I know, but everybody that played one, it was their friends. Yeah, yep. We all had that friend, right? The community. Yeah, yeah. The community. I was third oldest of eight kids, and my mom wasn't about to cave in and get a Nintendo. Yeah. Plus, yeah. I think it, from a parent standpoint, it had mixed reviews. Is it good for your health? It, yeah. it, it rots your brain. It rots your brain. It, to yeah. this day, people still think that games rot your brain. I, I, we're going to get into that later, because that. 
I am an advocate for gaming. Geniuses play video games. Oh. I've seen people. So. I've worked in video games. I've, I've, I'm credited on two games. Yeah. I'm uh, Medal of Honor. I worked on Medal of Honor, oh, one sweet. of those games. I worked on Call of Duty. So awesome. and I worked That's with Medic. So maybe I should be interviewing you, Blaine. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. Because because I'm not the most interesting thing here. Actually, the most interesting thing here is sorry, Drew. It's not you. It's not me. It's not you, Bex. But it's the oh, store. Yeah, it's the store. It really you walk in here and I turn into a little kid again. Yeah, it has yeah. a life of its I own. I turn into a sure. little kid with money in my pocket, though. That's dangerous. <laughs> because I tell Bex, I'm, I'm gonna go don't broke worry, in here. Don't worry. Don't worry. Your wife told me take the wallet before you. I let you walk in here. So we're good. Where's the we're fun good. in that? <laughs> So you said you started in, what, 85 playing games. Was Nintendo your first? I was born in 84, so let's just put in things into perspective. I probably played 89 mm-hmm. in okay. ni- 1990 mm-hmm. when I discovered Nintendo. I think my parents bought me a Super Nintendo the Christmas of 92 or yeah. 93. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, and we, we got a Sega Genesis around that same time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah. Something like that. That's when, right we, we bought up. That's yeah. when the gaming world yeah. doubled. They went to 16-bit yeah. graphics instead of the 8-bit. <laughs> yep. I can't believe Dang. how far we've come now. <laughs> Super really. Nintendo is my favorite console. I I, it Nintendo. still holds up today. It has a lot you. of good titles. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask what's your favorite console. Then what's your favorite title on there? Ooh. Can I put five out there? Dude, give me five. <laughs> Man. Nine in specific order. What's the top five? <laughs> no particular order. Earthbound, <laughs> Street Fighter 2. Oh, yeah. Um... Mario RPG is definitely up there. Let's oh, see yeah. what else. The remake just came out. It's it's, it, it's popping. It's great. hot. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mario Kart got to be in there, right? Come on. Mario Kart's in there, but not in your top five. Turtle, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time. Woo. That's gonna be in there. Castlevania Four. Oh, okay. Anything yeah. Capcom economy is great. I'm, I'll take. Are you still a big Capcom fan now? Oh yeah. Resident Evil Resident and all. Evil. Oh yeah. All that stuff. They can't go wrong with Resident. No. Evil. The last one was really good. The last one was great. Was it the uh, eight? Was it eight? Um, Village. I've been playing Resident Evil 4 Remake. That yes. Was, that's nostalgic for me. We just passed our game awards back in December. <laughs> did you see the game of the year? I did not. I'm not that deep into it. Baldur's Gate 3 won game of the year. Oh, really? Okay. And this was probably the toughest game of the year ever because mm-hmm. you got you had a lot Zelda. Of oh, yeah. You had a Mario, new Mario game, Wonder. Anytime you got oh, yeah. Nintendo Beast in there, they're going to they're gonna, yeah. they're gonna win. But they didn't this year. So it was interesting, though, because Resident Evil, the remake, was in there as well from Capcom. Yeah, I played Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 with my son yeah. on the Xbox, but I haven't. I have 20 games. This is sad. I have 20 games for the PlayStation 5 that are just, I can't, I haven't had time to get to. It's the backlog. Hey, a real yes. true gamers have a backlog that they'll yes. never finish. Yeah, I just have like all these things I intend to get to. Yeah, same here. And, uh, I still got games that are sealed. I still buy them and yeah. collect them, whatever, but. Oh, yeah. This this business is not good for that. For no, your hobby is, hobby as a business is not it's not good for your addiction. Well, it's like a, it's like a drug dealer. Don't get high on your own supply, right? That's <laughs> what they say. Hey, here. so I just have to throw that out there. Not that I know any drug dealers. Not right. that I know any. <laughs> but oh, I mean, it would totally be you to use that line, right? <laughs> Speaking I use that of, all the time. I, I, no, I awesome. mentioned I, I had I still had sealed boxes at home. Mm-hmm. That's just my own personal stuff. You've got sealed boxes here. I'm talking about PS5 games. Yeah. You've got sealed boxes of. Nintendo 64 games and stuff here. Original mm-hmm. boxes, maybe not sealed. That's insane. Those yeah. are 30 years old. Yeah, we have some complete in-box stuff, graded stuff. We're always buying used collections, trading them as well. My business partner and I, sometimes we uh, travel and go to game stores and pick up rare things if we can find them. We game hunt all the time. It's 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 awesome. hard. It's, it's, it's getting harder and harder oh, to yeah. do it, you know? Yeah. How long have you been here? How long have you been in business here? Yeah, so we started August of, man... It's been about 18 months, so what is mm-hmm. that? Yeah. 2021? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And so. is, do you just have the one location? Just one we location? do. We have plans to build a permanent location in Harriman. Oh, awesome. Uh, 5600 West, and that'll be a, twice the size, 6,000 square Dang. feet-ish. Yeah. Okay. We're really excited about that. product to fill those shelves. Dig. Yeah. Yeah, and we, the gaming community that comes out, they play and compete and trade, so it'll just give people more room to, to, to interact with people, and then for us, it'll be... It'll be nice to grow. And yeah. and that'll be another Galaxy of Games location. That'll be Galaxy of Games. That'll be the one and only. We'll move here. The one and only. Yeah, yeah they're going to expand and, and make it bigger to that one location. Yeah. So tell me, I do see all these tables here, and you mentioned yep. that you've got gamers coming. And tell me about this, because I am not a gamer. This is, like, not my world. Uh, what am I looking at in here? 80% <laughs> of the sales of this store are from two product lines, uh, Magic the Gathering and Pokemon. Okay. So those are yeah. the most popular card collectible card games in the in the world. Yeah. And they just have a massive following. 
People collect, they trade, they play, and so these mats just give you a way to sit up your Surface, decks and play. Yeah. And the artist of these mats are resembling of some of the art in the in the cards. Yes. What's awesome. the most people you've had in here at one time? These tables are full yeah. almost we almost daily. Because magic's something that I grew up with. We grew up with. Yeah, like that, I, this yeah. has been around and it's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's still it just continues to grow legs and grab new followers. But it's it's. It's a it's a fun card game. It's not for everyone, but for me, yeah. it's it's fun to watch people having fun, uh, interacting. Now, do you set up the times for these events? Do you yeah, you we have you draft and okay. booster, or we have draft nights and commander format. We have those we- daily or weekly. And players will know what that is. Yeah, players that, will hear that. You, she's over there thinking, yeah, well, like, I don't what know what that is. <laughs> yeah, and this is as far as my nerd <laughs> knowledge goes, because yeah. then I'm just the business guy, the investor on yeah. this. And Jeff's more the collector, and he plays regularly. Okay, awesome. Tell us a little bit more about Jeff. Yeah, so Jeff and I have been friends for years. Jeff's a real estate agent. He owns his own brokerage, Return Real Estate. Awesome. And uh, he is a business owner, investor, and a commercial developer as well. And so I've uh, been in the B2B sell space for over a decade. Okay. I've uh, sold software tech merchant services, and I've worked with Jeff in that capacity as a vendor yeah. For several years, and he, he and I have a lot of common. We've been friends for a long time, like I said. And he came to me and said, "Hey, I'm." He started a company in Utah called Game Haven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I heard of Game Haven. It blew up. You know, yeah. it the first store was actually across the street from this store. Wow. In the old uh, Shopco parking lot mm-hmm. next okay. to Shopco, mm-hmm. and he sold that when they got to I don't know four or five locations, and we he wanted to incorporate retro video games, mm-hmm. and I love the concept. I have been collecting games for some time so it was like let's do this let's do this and my wife looked at me like i had worms coming out of my ears she thought i was having a midlife crisis uh-huh. you are nuts <laughs> what is happening yeah a game store you don't even know what a po you make fun of people that play pokemon and uh-huh. so be careful like yes, what you wish for kids exactly so i yeah it's been fun it's just a venture that made sense to me jeff's super great businessman and he he runs the store as often as he's day to day he's hands on dang yeah it's it's just been a fun fun little investment venture first thing in my portfolio that's like totally different oh yeah than yeah. real estate or yeah, anything absolutely. else so. And 18 yeah. months, and here you are like looking to expand here in the next little bit yeah and i pay homage to Michael Gerber, who wrote the book, The E-Myth, and I think about all the mistakes new businesses make. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to implode. We don't want to work in the business, not on the business. So we we work in in a dual capacity, right? I'm the marketer. Mm -hmm. I'm the people guy, so the social butterfly. So I'm out (laughs) word of mouth marketing this business, but I do a lot of one-to-ones here. And in my line of work, I'm still full-time selling merchant services. So this is just a fun place to talk about because it's such an easy it's just funner it's fun to sell it's selling yeah, fun That's, absolutely you know, and, be a, be and a along kid. for yeah. sure I know you were oh, when yeah. we pulled up I still am. I still, yeah. I'm looking <laughs> around if you hear me being quiet it's because I'm just looking around looking Blaine are you with us still <laughs> I know he, he, he gone yeah he is checking out the merch <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry to Lindsay I, I did take the wallet as you instructed so we're safe <laughs> we're true. safe and, and she wouldn't even let me drive she made you pick me up today <laughs> the, so I wouldn't even bring my own car yeah, this and is be actually able to true pack it in there <laughs> I'm not, from her. I'm not even. I'm not making it up. Put that stuff down right now. No. <laughs> That's hilarious. Bex, do you play games? I don't. I don't. But my son does. Let me. Let me say this. Does. Does Batman Legos count? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Does Indiana Jones Legos count? Absolutely. Because yeah. That's what I was playing with my little guy when he's about four years old. He's mom. Mom, you want to play? He would call it Indian Jones. He didn't realize yeah. it was Indiana yeah. Jones. You want to play Indian Jones with me? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So that's Cute. the extent of my playing games. That's great. With my little guy. You know what? Who though? is now sorry, six foot, six foot three. He's not little anymore. Twenty years old. He's playing. So, he's yeah. plays on a lot of Red Dead Redemption. He, he left okay. the he Legos. Got a Red Dead tattoo on his arm this year. See? Yeah. So he came home with we that. We have Red so, Dead Redemption here. Oh yeah, gamers. We, we got a gamer. That's a great. That's a great title. So it should be no surprise that this game store took off. If you really think about it, it's not a surprise, right? Because if you look at the gaming world, yeah. that's multi-billion dollars every year. Yeah. yeah. You're talking about people who go and work. In, I've worked in games. Guess where I made the most money I worked? In games. It wasn't radio. It wasn't any hmm. of that stuff. It's game. Yeah. It's no surprise. Like, mm-hmm. people love games because that's something that people connect on. For yeah. sure. You were, you were over here, Bex, laughing, saying, I don't know. Does this game count? They all count. <laughs> they all count. 
yeah. people people have this 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 misconceived notion that gamers are nerds. Uh, nerds yeah. that, and I, was, I was totally teasing you. I know, but I'm yes, going to hit this but because yes. it it's is. very true. I'm a, I'm a nerd. I'm, I'm proud to say I'm a nerd. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a derogatory no, term. It, it shouldn't be. Video games for me, and you mentioned this, Drew, about building the community here with playing Magic the Gathering. Uh-huh. You saw my Destiny shirt earlier. Yes. I played Destiny almost 10 years now. It's almost yeah. 10 years deep. I've got lifelong connections that I consider my brothers. Like, I don't have blood brothers. But these guys would be. Yeah. And these people, black, white, mm-hmm. Indian, Hispanic, they're from all walks of Everywhere. life. It's people I would have yeah. never met anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got that connection now that I would welcome them into my home. Yeah. So call me a nerd. I'm <laughs> not being a nerd because yeah, of that. Because it. video games do it, video games bring the world together mm-hmm. yeah, in ways that you don't think about. And that that's what I'm gonna get into on my video game show. It's coming out game yes. related. Yeah, I can't wait to get into that. Yeah, I got, Blaine's got a podcast coming out. I know that we've talked about it a little bit, but yes, that's coming out. And you won't yeah. believe some of the celebrities that I've talked to Game about books. games. Yeah, no, fun. really, I'm yeah. excited to hear. It's this. gonna be fun, and I'm gonna show even deeper about that connection that people make. That you, I'm, I'm telling you, there's no way anywhere you would make a connection. Yeah, with some of these people. <laughs> yeah, but I love awesome. that about games. Really brings people together for sure. I do have to ask you one thing. Out of all this stuff in here, yeah. What's your favorite? What's the what's okay? All right, so on the spot. Obviously, um, I'm a '90s kid. Oh yeah. Yep. So I go to this wall right at the back, the uh, the Super east Nintendo of the store, which is our Super Nintendo. We have it chronological order. You guys can't see it, but it's regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64. I basically, okay. I I'm super nostalgic about the side scroller stuff. Yes. That I spent a lot, a lot of hours, a lot of thumb blisters. <laughs> button mashing oh, yeah. those yeah. fighting games, right? Yeah. And I think more so than the game, it's where I was when I played that game. Was okay. I at a sleepover at a friend's house? Was I staying up all night when I should have been getting ready for school? Uh-huh. That kind of stuff, right? And it's so there's that nostalgic element yeah. for and me. See, and that really like hits on your point, exactly. Blaine, with the memories and the people yeah. and the surrounding and the circumstances. Sure. I've played 4,000 oh, hours of this Destiny game. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, don't – I love Bungie. They made Halo. They brought Halo to us. Uh-huh. Yep. And I've played at least 4,000 hours almost in 10 years with, with, with these people, with these guys yeah. and girls that I've met. It's all walks of life, like I said. Mm-hmm. It's not just guys. For sure. For sure. It's everybody. He, she's, they's, all of it. I'm not yep. even kidding. It's all of it out there. And it's, it's, it's amazing to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, you, you, you don't get that connection somewhere else. The game Destiny, it's a good game, but it's not 4,000 hours good. The real experience is the experience you get with other people. With yeah. other people. Yeah. And we've all that talked connection. about that. We don't care about what game we're playing. Yeah. yeah. It's, if we jump to another game, we all go. Yeah, which is interesting because the way video games have evolved um, because as humans, we love movies, we love storytelling, yeah. and the video games have become more inversive, and that's what I love about, like, the newer games. So I could spend 4,000 hours on, like, Diablo 4. Oh, yeah. yeah. I could sink that in I've for sure. I've got hundreds sure. on there. That's a great game. Yes. There's so many games out there that you can do this to. Yes. And be able to, even on Diablo yeah, 4. Yeah, and you can connect and collaborate yeah. with a lot of people. It's kind of like, I used to skateboard a lot, and... We would get our friends together and we would go skateboard or if you play pickleball or whatever your jam is, it's there's always an outlet for you. And if you find a way to connect with people while doing it, it makes it funner for oh, some yeah. reason. Oh, yeah. But it's, yeah, I mean, the the video games online for me too, it is it is a different experience. I think I, can, I see why you can spend more hours on them nowadays mm-hmm. than back in the day. Because back in the day, it was like we didn't have the internet, so you had to play it. Yeah. In two hours, you had to beat a side scroller because you couldn't save it. No saves. And you only had so many lives and continues. And your mom's calling you for dinner. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, tr- it, it tested <laughs> the the skill of a gamer. You could always pause it then, then, though, but you can't pause now. That's the yeah. big thing. That's, you, how you, that's how you know a real gamer yeah, or a not gamer is when someone yells at the gamer, pause the game. You can't yeah, pause, you can't pause, pause those online. online. It's yeah. 24 hours a day. These things don't stop. You got servers <laughs> going all over. That's what I'm saying. This is a billion to multi-billion dollar industry now. It's not... It's not just games. Mm-hmm. Like we're, yeah, yeah. We said the word games loosely. It's a business. Like this is for sure. It, it's huge, a huge business. Huge. Yeah, it's not going anywhere, right? Yeah, I remember when the Nintendo Switch came out, and obviously the Smash Brothers has existed before that. But I remember playing Smash Brothers on the Switch, and I'm like, just button mashing yeah. my '90s kid yeah. trying to figure out how, just button mash. And I look up online. There's kids in Japan competing 
on Smash Brothers. They're, they're so good. Oh man, That's and they're. Awesome. Getting paid. I love watching, and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. I love watching esports, and people make fun of people that watch esports. But guess what? Those same people are watching NBA. They're watching NFL. Yeah. yeah. What's the difference? You're watching someone else play a game, right? Yeah. It might be physical, but these, this is not always just a mental thing. It's physical too. You're talking about the button mashing. You've seen these esports events where the guys show up with their custom controllers and stuff. Like it's wild. (laughs) Easy, Blaine. I didn't even know. Like my eyes are yeah. being opened today. I, I could feel the <laughs> feel the passion from yeah. Blaine. Oh, back. Oh, yeah, yeah. He loves this. I'm he telling you, does. gamers' lives matter, guys. <laughs> gamers' lives yes. matter. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, my son is going to be like, "Mom, where is this store? How do I find it? How do yeah. I? Where are you at? I know you've got some socials. You got your own website. Yeah, Give us all the details. We're the southwest corner of 90th South and Redwood Road for those Utah." That understand the grid system. Uh-huh. The the address is eighteen seventeen West nine thousand South West Jordan Utah. Love it. And our website is galaxyof.games. Love that. And you can find yeah. us on Facebook and Instagram as well. We are open twelve to ten on the weekends. Okay. Twelve noon. Twelve to yeah twelve noon to ten to p.m. Nine p.m. on the weekdays. Okay. So it's just. Come in if if a game's not on the shelves and it's like a board game and it's in print, we can order it. Right. The idea of it is we encourage loitering. We want you to come make friends, yeah. play games, hang out. Connect. We have an entire shelf behind me of test games. So if you're like, hey, on the fence about buying a game, come pop it down, play for free. And if you need help with the rules, we have the workers here will will explain how to use the rules. And I want to point out that we're not talking about just Monopoly. No. Like no. Well, I no, see no. games out there you've never heard of before. There's uh, yeah. you gotta go at Whirling things. Witchcraft, Small yeah. World, Mysterium. These yeah. look great. Like these are probably fun. Yeah, this is Splendor, fun stuff. Azul, all the good games. Concept, ticket to ride. I'm looking over there. This mm-hmm. we're not gonna this isn't grandma's house where you play Chinese checkers. This no, is this is some good stuff. Sophisticated in here. gaming. <laughs> yeah. All right, I got one more question for sure. you. Sure. Now one of my biggest memories in games is a game for PlayStation One. It was Terry Pratchett's Discworld. Mm-hmm. Can't find that game anywhere. Can't find it anywhere. It's rare. If anybody out there got some <laughs> tips on that, I want that game. I need hey. that PlayStation. I want it in the original. You know the boxes. Yeah. You know those Ridge. Got to have that. Oh, well, you're not yeah. asking for much. Like, not much. Just a, just a just, yeah. holy grail of games oh, it, for me. Word, That's my holy grail of games. Info at Radio Daybreak. <laughs> if you mean, got any info shoot. for me at Just Play TV. <laughs> if that shows up for me, ooh, I'm yeah. telling you, yeah. that I, I'd have a little thug tear. Oh, Come yeah. out of my... <laughs> you certainly would. I got it. I, okay, I, I'm just going to tell your wife right now. I can't help it if somebody brings that to him <laughs> and what that's going to cost. So I'm going to need I'm a sorry, PlayStation I 2. I got a PlayStation <laughs> 1. Not a, play, a PlayStation also. I'll need yeah. that. But okay. outside of that, that's what I'm looking for. Anybody's got some leads on that? Yeah. And we will do video game swaps. So follow us online. We, we usually post those in the summer. So Perfect. Thanks, Drew. This is yeah. great. Uh, I'll be here for the rest of the, the day. And... Probably going to start taking up a shift here. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're hired. Yeah, you know you. what, Blaine? You would be fantastic. You would be, Bert, right? You want to know something right? about the games? Just ask Blaine. Thanks. This is great. No, this is great. Thanks again, Drew, for You're being welcome. on the show. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Ooh, oh, my God. I could have stayed in there for... I, I could have still been in there right now. I could I still be in me. there doing it. I love that place. Drew Kimball from Galaxy of Games. I'm going to go back over there and, and get into some D&D tournaments or go over there and, and, and start playing some stuff with the, with the people. Take a whole, you need to take your whole gaming crew with you. I, I'm going to. I'm gonna, we're going to show up one night over there at Galaxy of Games, and it's going to be real fun over there. Drew, I'm still waiting on somebody to find me that copy of Discworld on PlayStation 1 and a way to play it. You're, but until, you're not really hard to please at all, are you? No, no, not at all. Not at all. But... <laughs> I'm an insider with Santa Claus this year, so you might need to put that request in. That's true. That's true. So I'm, maybe I will. Maybe I will. But until then, there's a big event coming up for Daybreak residents. It's the Daybreak Farmers Market. So yes. we got to go over here. I got We got to go talk to somebody about that. Let's see what's going down. I know yes. it's been like 60 degrees out there lately. We could have had the Farmers Market on Soto Road what, last week, two weeks ago. It's been crazy. But I got to bring in Laura from Empowered Community Markets. That's formerly Sojo Markets. That's right. She's got some news for all the people out there asking. Laura, thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys, for having me. Guys, I'm so excited to let everybody know that the applications for the Daybreak Farmers Market are open. So you can oh. go. Yes. Nice. Finally. Finally. We're waiting for this. <laughs> they they have. are open. So they are open. And all you have to do is go to daybreakfarmersmarket.com. 
go to the Daybreak Farmers Market page and down to the Policy and Procedures Manual. We put the applications in the Policy and Procedures Manual, so you will read the Policy and Procedures yes, Manual. I love it. So, Laura, how hard is that process when you get into that application? Can you give us a you know estimate of what goes into that application? What 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 kind of time do I have to put in? All that kind of stuff. Sure. The application is really basic. Your name, contact information, things like that. So it doesn't take very long to fill it out. I will say if you are selling food, you really need to go through that policy and procedures manual and make sure that you are following all the regulations for food uh, because those are really important. We stick really close to this. And Great one thing know. I do want to point out is this fills up fast, yeah. right, Laura? Like yep. these Lots are, you announce it and then they're gone. So if you're even thinking about it, get your application in, get this rolling. Well, yes, how, many, get how many spots do you have? Do you have, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm excited. <laughs> I appreciate that. So each week we have 60 booth spaces available. So, and we rotate those, um, especially the arts and crafts ones. We rotate a lot to keep the market fresh every week. The applications will be open until March 9th and we won't even look at them until then so that everything can come in. And we can have everything in one big group to go through and have a really nice compilation of the applications. After that, um, if you apply, you'll go onto the wait list. So get yours in before March 9th and we'll go from there. Nice. So I'm, I got a side hustle I just started up now. I'm going to come down there and see if I can get my application approved. I started, I started, I started making soap. I felt like that's the, next, that's the next big thing. I'm making my own soap right here in the house. So I'm going to come down there and set up a little booth. Yeah, if you don't so, have room for me, I understand. <laughs> no, You know, I absolutely love soap. I actually called myself um, a body product snob now because of the farmer's market, because I oh, love yeah. using products that don't have preservatives and all the other junk that goes oh. into store-bought soap and products. So I get all of mine at the farmer's market. So my so my handmade soap is actually made out of, uh, you know, when you, you use one of those those boards on your feet and you, and you scrub Be it careful. off? <laughs> Well, I take I take the, the I take the shavings there, and I make that into a bar of soap. So. Oh no, Laura! I'm sorry. We I knew it was coming. I, what happened? It was going to be the scent of the soap or the process of the soap making. What's wrong with that? What's wrong? I thought what? that is that not healthy? That's that's as wholesome and healthy as it gets. Right? I, I don't think we're going to meet the regulations on that. No. <laughs> so, I, so you if don't the policy and procedure. Exactly. No, I, I know what to add it. to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. Laura, thank you so much. I'm definitely not making soap and I'm not making fun <laughs> of this farmer's market because I do love going down there and it's weekly, right? It's still it's still going to be weekly every Saturday. Yes, Is it's every Saturday from the second week of June to the second week of October from 9 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. And then awesome. next year, if it's if it hits January 2025 and it's 60 degrees outside again, we, I think we should open it up to We might have some pop-up markets. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you. Hey, there's one coming up. We know we know you got one coming up February 10th on Valentine's, that's right. for Valentine's Day. So that's at Novel Daybreak by Crescent Communities. We'll have more info on that, but I can't wait for that as well. Laura, thank you so much for joining us. And that's it thank for you. us right here on Radio Daybreak. Do you want to unleash your inner power and heal your past wounds? Do you want to learn the secrets of Celtic wisdom and magic? Do you want to transform your life and align with your true purpose? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then you need to listen to Practically Magic, the podcast that shows you how to use ancient healing in a modern way. Join me, Courtney Earle, a self-proclaimed witch, healer, and Celtic priestess, and let me guide you through the dark cauldron of your subconscious and help you emerge with a new vision of yourself. Practically Magic is more than just a podcast. It is a journey of self-discovery and empowerment. Tune in every week and get ready to experience massive healing, balance, and peace for your soul and body. Listen on Ride the Wave Media.